Belgium is really a country of uh, collectionneurs and they mix modern art, old art and that's nice. We are not anymore in a period you just like this and just this and not the else. You're not dressed in jeans all the time or in a, in a suit all the time, you mix. That's to be modern and the same for art. And I love this lamp because it's, it's, it's real architecture. It's with small details, it's asymmetrical. There have been very few examples made of them. Alva Alto was very, very often when he was desi uh, designing a building, it would be also be the designing the furniture and the lighting within the building. And this was uh, made for uh, the headquarter of a very important pulp and paper company in Finland called Enzo Gutzeit and he created this light for their boardroom. We are in a stand of one of the most famous Belgium interior designer. And I usually love the object he chose. And I mainly love this object because when I was a kid, I've been living in Greece all my youth. And this reminds me of Greece and I like the the classical part and the broken part of it. It's incomplete, so with the small part you imagine all the rest and that's what I like in this object. And I also love the, this cupboard by its disproportion. It's not classical proportion, but also it's like a world. It's very classical, but I like the proportion of this, this cupboard. Then there's this object, it's like a sculpture, but actually it's made by nature. And there's only one place in the world where nature makes this thing, it's in France. The surface is amazing, it's not been cleaned, so you know, the pigment no, survives, you have incrustations. And you can also see how the artist made this. This was made from stucco, which is yeah. kind of like a, a plaster, and it's worked when wet. And you can see perhaps it was the yes, exactly. was used to... working with the Guy Peters Gallery uh, since I think uh, six years already and um, so the good thing about this collaboration is that you have the completely freedom as an artist to do what you want to do. And one year ago in the Biennial of Venice I was asked by the campus of human rights to make the symbol of human rights. So I started to make a sculpture which is now uh, forever as a, as a public uh, sculpture in Venice. Which you know is very difficult because in Venice normally it's not allowed to have a sculpture over there. So I built this exhibition around this theme and this is the result. Starting from this one, uh, thinking that nature is a human right, that we have to uh, show us a lot of respect with nature, that we have to find a balance between nature and culture. So in the, in the context of, uh, of, of thinking about uh, architecture and designing, yeah. uh, my work is often um, uh, seen in many environments where architecture is taking place because I think I have a very modern work. And um, for example, I work very close with Mario Botta, which is one of the, uh, I think, top architects in the world. Uh, this year, last year we did the Magritte, mm -hmm. and this year we're um, exhibiting some special uh, minimalists from South Korea. As we are an emerging market, our artists, they go up 10 to 20 percent per year, so mm -hmm. it's always interesting mm -hmm. uh, for Perfect. clients. Well, we have many um, promising artists. Uh, all our artists are um, internationally recognized, mm -hmm. but there's one artist in particular which I'm very uh, fond of. Um, his name is Kim Chang Yul, uh, right. from South Korea. He's still alive, he's 90 years old, and he's considered as the godfather of uh, modern art mm -hmm. in uh, Korea. Mm -hmm. Kim Chang Yul, he was born in North Korea, and during the Korean War, he, he could flee to South Korea. And thanks to a sponsorship by the Rockefeller Foundation, he got the chance to move to New York in the 60s to work uh, as an abstract expressionist. And then he moved to Paris because for him it was still capital of Europe, capital 
art and that is where he became hyper-realist and he's the only artist in the world who can make water drops, he can paint water drops three-dimensional in a very simple way. And speaking about the price, which one is more expensive? Well, Korean art is always based on the size, so it doesn't matter the beauty, actually it's always sold by size. So obviously this work is a bit uh, more, less expensive. It's also another series, it's called Recurrence, because in the back you have uh, Chinese characters, a very famous poem in China that everyone in Asia knows about. Wolfram Ulrich is a German artist uh, in his 60s. He already exhibited at Art Basel. He also exhibited with uh, gallery Denise René in Paris, a very uh, famous gallery. And we have the honor for the first time at Braffa to present him. Um, he works also with three-dimensional parts. Um, it's in steel. And um, terms and price is not very expensive. And at this moment, he's doing a solo exhibition in Catanzaro Museum. Yes, uh, 25 years ago, we were just collectors, collectors of comic strips, and the market didn't exist in Europe. And so uh, in 25 years, uh, we, we, we came from collectors until the gallery at the Braffa since 10 years. Now. In the English, art is it too, too commercial? And how would you say, is art too, too commercial? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I do. With Banksy, for example, yeah. some people say his idea was to destroy completely his work. Mm -hmm. Of course, it didn't happen. So the, the, the meaning is completely different in that case. If it was completely destroyed, that would be in the, in the spirit of Banksy. It was not, so only he knows. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. yes, I think uh, the, in the market, in art, you can find pieces at thousand euros mm -hmm. magnificent but uh, when you don't have the name you can you cannot uh, sell at high prices mm -hmm. but if you tell at the, at the artist that he is a decoration artist uh, he would be angry so this is Jean-Claude Göting mm -hmm. uh, one of my uh, two favorite artists here oh, yeah. uh, he's French he lives in Paris mm -hmm. he makes comics he made comics and uh, five six you know, maybe ten years ago he wanted to make, uh, I'm not saying real art, because comics is real art, but uh, coming out of uh, his strips. And so he, he begins uh, to make uh, canvases and drawings. It's the gallery that exists after 40 years. I started in London in the 60s and after I came to Paris and now I am in Paris for 40 years, the whole gallery. Mm -hmm. I specialize in contemporary glass of different nationalities, the best. Mm -hmm. Here in this exhibition I show 14 different artists, 14 mm -hmm. with different quality and different attitudes the best in the contemporary glass scene. By reputation, by my work, by curiosity, I am always at the research to the best. Mm -hmm. When they come out of schools and when they are already young, they have three generations of artists from Czechoslovakia, mm -hmm. they are from England, from Italy. That is a very important Czech artist. The most important in the future, in the future I am talking, mm -hmm. it will be him, Martin Lubishek, will be Eva Blikova. Mm -hmm. So we are Roberte Basta Gallery, we are in Milan, we have five stores in Milan and one in London and one in Lugano, so we are a big company. My mother Roberta, she opened the gallery more than 50 years ago and it was two women, Roberta, the name of the another woman, they fight each other and they say, remove my name, Roberte Basta. We are the, it's the sixth time that we make Braffa and we like so much this fair. This fair is so particular because the people are very cultural, so they know exactly what they're going to buy. So we like to show all the historian of the 20th century that we are specializing. So here in this stand, that is a green stand, so good luck stand, because in Italian green is good luck. Right. 
uh, is uh, to present all the period of the 20th century. We start with the Liberty, so we have a beautiful bureau, we have a desk by um, Quarti. It's incredible the, the manufacturers, so the, the, the exactly the works to, to, to put the uh, mother pearl inside. Mm -hmm. And uh, we finish from, uh, with the two beautiful ice cream by Manolo Valdes, this is 2008. Mm -hmm. So you can see all the uh, 20th century period. We have a great pieces uh, back of us, this, this uh, green cabinet. Mm -hmm. It's not really green, but it's glue. Mm -hmm. And it's so important because we buy directly from the family. that bought in 1935, so we are exactly the provenience from, from there was. Mm -hmm. And it's incredible nice and important, historically important pieces. How Art Deco was born in French, so the best Art Deco is French, the best design is Italian. So this is really the truth design, is a 1980 design, is the new avant-garde, it's called, and is made by Ettore uh, Sozzas. Sozzas. Yeah. This is a very rare pieces because it's the one of the first production, was not really industrial production. When I come to Braffa, because I used to participate in Braffa, I'm searching for um, objects, paintings, carpets, whatever it could be that they, I can mix together because I'm not the one style, one origin, one period person. I'm a, I love mixing. So when I come here, I go on every stand, every dealer because everyone has something special because it's very good dealers. Basically, my clients are not into investment because they consider that they have enough money to buy what they love. We love it and we keep it. So if, if I'm here, it's because I love bronze. And uh, Xavier is a, is a very good art dealer. And I think especially this year, it's full of small bronzes. Normally people love big things. I love big bronze for the garden. Huge, huge things, gigantic things. But for the house, I like all these small animals that we can hear. When you see the quality of the work, of the craft, of the patine and everything, it's really, it's very low key again. You can't feel the money, but it's very good quality. This is another crush, totally, totally different. It's a Belgian painting from Herbert van der Bol. Uh, 1927, and I think it's very funny. It's all written in Flemish. It's a monkey, as you can see, a painting. He has a, a feather in his, in his hair, and he says in Flemish that he's, um, he's not a good painter. But because he's not a good painter, he became a very good critic. And I think it's very funny, a bit cynical, but, but the, the all it's not that much the painting, it's just the idea that a guy who's a painter says he's not a good painter, so he became a critic. Because everybody knows that in the world of art that there are so many people criticizing, but they never did anything. The gallery was founded in 1917 in The Hague in Holland. Right. And the family moved to Antwerp in 1920. And since 1920, we're on the same spot at the Comedy Class in Antwerp. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, a, like I said, an old family business. I'm the fourth generation now. As you can also feel in this place, you have outside the very modern looking uh -huh. uh, braided mat, which is from uh, the States. Uh -huh. uh, these are pieces from the 30s and uh, they were all handmade. They would recollect old pieces from clothes and then they would braid it and then put it in a circle and sew it all together. Uh, and then, for instance, this piece is a very classical uh, Keshan, which is from Iran. Uh, it's from around the 8080s, so quite old, but still in a very good condition. First of all, he's one of my best friends and we've been collecting and um, been traveling all over the world for the last 25 years together. And um, we are passionate about design from the 50s. And the good thing is about this fair is that you have like a, a bunch of many, many different support, you know, from the 30s, 50s, 60s, like a mix of very interesting in different, you know, settles. To be honest with you, when I start to collect art like 25 years ago, I was not really in all the design, and I was not interested. And finally I noticed that the good thing about design, that finally you keep design and sometimes you change art. Because design is something you feel good in, you enjoy, you, enjoy, you can touch it, 
you can feel it, you can have great time with design. Well, we have around um, 60, 70 pieces from design. And the main piece that we own in the foundation is a Maison from Jean Prouvé, six by six, from uh, the 1942. And uh, this is an amazing piece that we bought for the foundation because by having a house from Jean Prouvé, you can really enjoy a mixture about different you know, supports. You can bring out some drawing, canvas, like furniture, nice African sculptures, nice lights. It's, it's like a playground for a big and whole guy like me, trying to collect the good things. Now for me, you, you have two mainstream. You, you, you have like Ronarat, that is for me the, um, his favorite, his favorite from, uh, from Stanislas. He really likes it a lot. And, but in another way, for me, the, the new and the, the top niche one now is Mark Newson. Because this guy is mixing watches, mixing cars, mixing some supports for some industrial things. And it's very interesting to really promote that. This gallery is a very strange gallery because it's a 21 century cabinet of curiosity. So it's a new model of Wunderkammer, okay, and Kunstkammer. So we take the category, it's Mirabilia, Naturalia, and Scientific Exotica, and we bring in the 21 century. So this gallery is placed in Italy, in Tuscany, close to Florence, and we place in very old theater from 16th century. We have uh, quite a good uh, staff or customer, so they are uh, European, also Asian, because also the gallery is specialized uh, also in dinosaur, big dinosaur. So we sell a lot in Singapore, Hong Kong, uh, and also China, but now also in Europe, because in France, uh, there's a lot of castle, private castle, and this guy buy this dinosaur for putting it in his castle. So when they put it in castle, what happened? The 20% more customers are coming to visit the castle because we have the dinosaur inside. And also this year we make something special because it's the 50th uh, centenary for the man go to the moon, land on the moon, 1969, Neil Armstrong, okay? Mm -hmm. So we bring all material that speak about space. We have Russian mm -hmm. spacesuit. Mm -hmm. This is Kizim, it's in uh, Russian Euro, okay? And then this is uh, from Zvizda, also, you know, the Russian NASA. Yeah. And uh, we have the meteorites, moon meteorites, Martian meteorites, uh, and all this kind of stuff that think about space. This is an, an astrolabe from 15th century. Uh -huh. It's the only one in private hand. They make 21. This is the, the last one. And we ask 1 million euro. Colombo, when you go to America, maybe use this one. You know yeah. what I mean? It's something really special. So when the customers say, what do you suggest me? I say, somebody that really you like it because you have to live for your object. So it's investment, also, you have to really have you know, fun with your object. Мы начинали с художника в русской эмиграции, это была часть нашего утраченного наследия, которое в 90-е годы вернулось в Россию. Сейчас мы больше у нас фокус на вещи советского периода, советский дизайн так называемый. И это очень интересная ниша, я стала этим заниматься очень активно, потому что я поняла, что помимо там, агитационного фарфора, агитационных лаков, которые всем прекрасно известны, есть еще целый пласт неоткрытых, вещей, не представленных, не изученных. И в то же время это такое, ну, как скажем, белое пятно в нашей истории искусства, которое, конечно же, нужно заполнить обязательно. Вложение в искусство – это всегда такая вещь. Иногда художник очень сильно растет, неважно, современный или есть опыты прошлого. В какой-то момент все прекращается, и ценность очень высоких становится очень низким. А иногда наоборот, художник постепенно, постепенно прибавляет по 5-7-10% ежегодно, в какой-то момент, там, спустя 20 лет, это в тысячу раз, как было, например, Шили. Вот. Мы никто не, не можем предсказать, как обернется. Но когда-то один коллекционер научил меня простому правилу. Искусство дорого, когда оно редко, он сказал. И я вот с тех пор как-то все-таки э, все время проверяю, этот его, скажем, лозунг, слоган, и, в общем-то, убеждаешь, что, наверное, так оно и есть. Потому что, когда вещь уникальная, редкая, будь то картина, будь то предмет, 
объект, это всегда востребовано.